election season with uh, 960 million of us eligible to vote. It is one of the biggest exercises in one of the most complex countries and no doubt it's going to be special. But every time election season comes across, it brings out the best in our country, but it also scratches at our conscience with the worst. Suddenly ugly things start surfacing when it comes to issues that have been used by politicians to polarize us from Hindu, Muslim to caste. All of these things start rearing their heads at a point in time where you would not expect it to happen, but it does happen. Suddenly, you start seeing a lot of Hindu-Muslim tamasha going on, instigated by actors working to create a hostile environment, to create polarization. It happens in the same with caste. Our politicians go about and they spew all sorts of hate. Why do they do that? They spew hate because they know that the more aggressive nonsense that they talk, the more attention they will get. People like me and news channels and headlines will be generated by them talking nonsense. We have an opportunity, hopefully, and we should look at hope, to do the most positive, cleanest election cycle. You've heard the chief election commissioner yesterday pointing out at the efforts that the election commission intends to take in making sure that not only politicians behave, but all the lumpen elements that make hay when the electoral sun is shining also are made to behave. It's easier said than done and we all have more than a modicum of responsibility to ensure that the next two and a half months goes riot free, ugly incident free, gundagari free, lumpen element free and all these things can be achieved. If we put our heads to it, it is possible. Let's open up this telecast on the broadcast with me to figure out how we do it and if it's possible in 2024. Ambassador Baswati Mukherjee is with us, Desh Tata Nikam joining us, Sayyid Asad Abbas is with us and Sumit Peer all joining us on the broadcast uh, to pick uh, this conversation up. Ambassador Mukherjee, the premise is very simple, ma'am. We've lived in this country all our lives and we know that the country is largely peaceful. We don't have daily issues of some Hindu-Muslim rioting going on. We are not a country of hate mongers. We are dedicated to our identities and proud of who you, we are. You are a proud Bengali for sure and a proud Indian. We are able to balance all our identities really well all of the time. But when election seasons roll around, suddenly ugly things start happening which then get caste connotations or religious connotations and hate connotations. Can we be hopeful of skipping at least a large percentage of that this time around? I think, Rishabh, you've identified the main issues very well. In Under this government, for 10 years, in fact, India has been uh, relatively free from communal violence, hate politics, etc., except by a few who are determined to do so for what they call vote bank politics. And the same is equally true for utilizing a caste uh, as a vote bank. This has decreased substantially under the present government. The new factor which complicates issues just before a humongous election like India's is the role of social media. Social media has to behave in a responsible manner so that fake news is not spread, so that some news that there has been some person of a particular community has been lynched for a particular reason, which is fake news, is spread for, for purposes of communal riot, rioting or to put the government of the day in a, bad, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a bad image. That kind of issue has not been addressed by the election commission in its present intervention. But I'm sure that they are fully aware and they would work out measures by which Social media is responsible without it being said that the government of the day 
or Indian democracy is being subverted by overt control of social media. Therefore, it is a responsibility that comes from the users of social media, from those who control social media or Twitter, etc. That's one factor. Yes. The other, which is very important, is that places of worship, their sanctity must be respected. It, in any case, it is against the, the code of conduct to have political rallies within a place of worship. But even outside a place of worship, in areas where, in, as, as is common in our country, different communities live cheek by jowl, we have to take special care to ensure that those lumpen elements that you are referring to, and there are many lumpen elements operating some with funds coming from outside, they need to be controlled so that they don't give a completely false communal twist or a communal narrative yes. that does not at all reflect the views of this country or the views of its citizens, but only serve to spoil India. No, so, so there are so many factors at play, Ambassador, that want it to be chaotic and ugly and sometimes the politicians themselves wanted to be chaotic and ugly. Sometimes they are relying on gundagiri. Okay, muscle power is what uh, the EC said. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, we have mystery riots in Delhi, for example, for 30 years, no issues. Okay, and then suddenly a US president shows up uh, and uh, riots take place and, and a few dozen people are killed. Uh, so, let's not kid ourselves. There are so many actors who want it to be a chaotic, bloody, messy episode foreign and domestic. The question is, can we wise up and prevent that from happening this time around? Sumit, we've seen a lot of incident-free elections in, a very, in very large states. In UP, for example, incident-free election. You know, the, the standard ugliness of, of polarizing issue that there is a riot taking place and then some police shooting happens and it becomes a, becomes a Lakhimpur Kheri. Okay. Uh, then there is an entire ghirao happening by some farmer agitation and some lumpen element starts stone pelting or you know climbing the red fort and then police action takes place and then this is shown as uh, police brutality. Many times an uh, innocent, we saw what happened in Uttarakhand. Some cop killed his wife's lover and tried to pass him off as a riot victim in, and said this is a Hindu Muslim issue that happened in Uttar Uttarakhand. How do we wise up? Uh, Rishabhji, thanks for having me on your show. I think the mantra of today's politics, what Mohanji has rightfully done, no, whether we like it or not, whether a person likes it or not, it's, it is the politics of development. If you have to compete with Prime Minister Modi, if you have to compete with BJP, you have to talk development. Now, those are political parties which survive on caste divides, on regional divides, on linguistic divides, on all kinds of divides, and their Rajniti has been running around them. Now, the good thing is today, at least we are talking how many roads are in UP, how many express highways are built in, how much of FDI has come in. So things like this are being talked about. The overall narrative is not going to cast, the overall narrative is not going to sectarian, the overall narrative is not going to those you know linguistic divides and all. But unfortunately, we have a lot of small regional parties who only thrive on that, whose vote banks is on that, whose existence is on that. And they will do everything on the book to make it sure that the Prime Minister Modi cannot come make it. So, and to, or at least if you cannot stop Modi, you have to make this look election as one-sided, unfair. You should have a lot of violence so that you could, you could cast finer aspersions on the biggest democratic process of the Republic of Bharat. That is what their silent motives are. And there are players on our right and left and point five here, which will do everything to you know work hand in glove with them, which will do everything to make it look like that. Because somehow... If when the Prime Minister Modi is destined to win, you want to make it look not a fair election. You want to make it look, this had violence. You want to make it look, oh, there was a, there was suppression, police brutality, you know, Sarajnetik Tantra ka durupyo kiya gaya, you know, constitution was challenged, law and order was challenged. So you will do everything on the book. But the good thing is it is not what it was 15 years back. 15 years back, all those things were thriving. I think the element of development has taken the central stage with 70%. 30% these regional players and parties okay. will everything in the book to do it but we as india if we look into the development and development and development then these all things can be brushed aside Rishabh. okay so are we are we then patsies as we are often treated by politicians adesh ratan nigam uh, because we were told for all these decades that uh, there is an industry running creating tensions like stone pelting in jammu and kashmir okay we didn't believe it we moved on with it 
took it at face value until one day we realized it was indeed an industry running and the money stopped and everything else stopped with it. There is equally a political industry that runs. Let's not be naive and say it doesn't run. All political parties have their ruffians, they have their gundas uh, from the literally university level uh, all the way at the, at the highest level. Ugly things take place, murders happen, crimes against women take place, caste crimes take place, uh, communal crimes take place. Not because that's the fabric of the nation, but because they are being done especially to create an angry, chaotic atmosphere. Are you more hopeful this time around? Rishabh, in fact, uh, any political party, if it cannot win normally, they try to create extraordinary circumstances, such as riots, gundagardi, as you pointed out, so that the voting pattern can be affected uh, and the narrative can be built. And that's what we have been seeing near the elections. We start seeing, as you pointed out, Trump comes and you have so many problems and unnecessary, you know, uh, the Lakimpur Kiri also happened. So people try to create those kind of situations in order to build a narrative. However, uh, we have the best electoral exercises in the world, the biggest election, free, fair and peaceful elections, given the magnitude and uh, the steps that have been taken by the uh, election commission this time. And why I'm being more uh, this thing uh, hopeful is that keeping the past experience in mind, they have started making few changes, like the fake news on the social media, which comes under four M's, uh, muscle power, money power, misinformation, and the model code of conduct violations. The four M's that the uh, pointed out by the chief election commissioner. And there, the fake news on social media, they'll be very closely <coughs> monitored. There are consequences under the IT Act and rules and also under the Representation of People Act. So all those can be, you know, brought in this time. Secondly, the check post on the interstate borders and the international borders, which have been, you know, created this time. So that uh, cross-border movement infiltration during the time, which in some areas in West Bengal and others in the Northeast also increases, uh, that has to be plugged in. Thirdly, you know, the uh, uh, advertisements, which I used to see normally, is as advertisements passed as news, which they are focusing on this time. Earlier, they were not focusing on. They will be focusing because those advertisements appeared as news in the papers and people tend to believe it. So those are very, very important, uh, you know, changes that are being brought in. And the use of government machinery, uh, they have emphasized, although it is already there, you cannot use government machinery for campaigning. And one of the most important aspects that has come in, uh, in this particular uh, election is political parties and star campaigners have already put on notice. That notice al already contains the penalties, punitive actions, the sections, uh, the penalties, punishments, and the uh, consequences under the Representation of People yes. Act. Therefore, subsequent steps will be far harsher. Okay, so this doesn't become, that's the stick. That's the stick. The Election Commission can wield a stick, but there's X they can do. Uh, it is not conducive also to start willy-nilly disqualifying candidates. That's something the Election Commission does not do. Uh, you know, they put a bar on campaigning for a day or two or two, three days. And that's the, that's the extent of it. Because you don't want to say, okay, if I'm a candidate, I should be disqualified and unable to contest an election. Because that is also not good in a democracy. So the question then is, Sayyid Abbas, if there is a stick available, which is of some efficacy, not absolute efficacy, the carrot has to be that the campaigners themselves, the political parties, the leaders, the candidates, they feel that running a non-hateful, cleaner, non-divisive, more unifying electoral campaign is a better idea. That's what gets you vote and that's about them for us to convince them that this is what we want. Rishabh Sahib, I agree with you on the front that a mere 48 hours, 72 hours is not good enough to stop them from campaigning. As a matter of fact, we know what happened with Union Minister Manika Gandhi to Yogi Adityanath Ji, Azam Khan, Mayavati. They were all stopped for campaigning for 48 hours to 72 hours, which is not enough. I believe if there is great power, there is great responsibility and equal accountability. The same reason why when the Election Commission of India was struck upon by the Supreme Court of India and it was called what? It was called a toothless tiger. Why so? Mere stern warnings are not good enough. There needs to be actions, there need to be implementation so that there is a precedent set there. Democracy also means that you do not allow these 
powerful leaders to go on with their hate speech, to go on uh, breaking the code of conduct. As a matter of fact, Rishab Saab, I was a, a member of Legislative Assembly candidate here from Karnataka, Bengaluru in the year 2018. And I can tell you, I was running from pillar to post to the returning officer and making complaints, but I didn't really see anything uh, efficient coming through. So therefore, I believe the leaders, the political party, along with the election commission, must and should take action against all those who uh, violate the norms of the code okay, of conduct. But then the question is what action? Okay, the action generally is a penalty, as I mentioned, of not, not being able to campaign for a couple of hours. Okay, but, that's the, but that's then you then that also not... happens via media. Maximum you can't conduct rally. So what are you saying? Uh, we don't election commission Absolutely, does not sir. really have the powers per se to disqualify you from standing for elections. Yes, you're absolutely right, uh, Rishabh Saab. The same reason why, you know, and not just that, sir, even the cap, which is set at 25 lakh in a Vidhan Sabha Assembly, Lok Sabha, it's about 75 lakh per candidate, but they go above and beyond. Yes. Today, let me tell you, Rishabh Saab, it's so unfortunate that common people like you, me, Sumit Saab, uh, Desh Ratan Nigam Saab, it's difficult to contest elections today. No, no, it's impossible. And you're absolutely right. Let, let, we are yes. being extremely naive by saying that whatever the cap is, 10 CR or whatever the cap is, uh, at, the, at the Lok Sabha level is much less uh, at, at the level of lacs, at the a, at MLA of, level. Yes. Nobody keeps that. Okay. But that's, that's an... Under, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking about the more nasty ones. Okay. Th there are certain things we can accept, but the more nasty ones. I'll give you an example. Somebody will decide in Delhi that we are going to block traffic by getting on the road to read namaz. Then some moron cop will come, he'll misbehave, make a scene, make a, uh, I, I don't know what pejorative I can say on TV, but do an obscene thing, start kicking and shoving in the most obscene way people. And you know what's going to happen. That's, that is a few people zabardasti blocking traffic when they didn't have to, and a moron behaving in an obscene fashion, and this will become the fabric of Hindu-Muslim issues in the country and become the biggest. So the people who go about and do either moronical things or deliberately instigative things, Abel Mujemar kind of things, what do we do? How do we reduce that a little bit this time around? With both of them, as a matter of fact, those who try to make this Hindu-Muslim issue, where I uh, certainly it's uh, very hurtful, uh, of course, uh, there is a place for, uh, you know, to do your uh, puja or a namaz and so on and so forth. Uh, the cop could have taken action against them, but rather a police enforcement officer kicking them, shoving them, like you said, is not called for. But my request would be do not look at this as a Hindu Muslim prism. Also, those netas in the respective area of Delhi or otherwise making this and milking this for polarizing your votes and getting voters is absolutely not exactly. okay. For this one solitary incident, painting the whole country in one picture is absolutely exactly wrong. my point no, exactly and, and nastier Rishab things happen no and nastier on, things happen to add on to that Rishab yeah. Saab. yes absolutely sir i completely agree with you on that front taking this solitary uh, uh, incident and painting the picture is wrong be it any political party be it any neta it's absolutely not okay hate speeches i tell you sir yes you are right i'm, I'm glad uh, uh, Rishab Saab, that you know not being an election candidate but having good amount of knowledge on this Yes, the Election Commission of India does not have a power to disqualify. But I would certainly say if the Supreme Court has been able to wrap them saying that they're a toothless tiger, there needs to be bills, amendments where the lawmakers need to bring in to give them the okay. power. There's, a, the, the okay. there's, there's, elections, a, there's another interesting thing. Point. Yeah, yeah. There's a, I'll just come back to you. There's a very interesting thing which, is, which has come out also is that the political parties have been asked to, Mr. Nigam, justify why they can't find for their particular constituency a candidate who does not have a criminal record. Now, I know there's a complexity to the argument. Many, many politicians face real cases and many politicians sometimes face, face fake cases as well. Just because they're in public life, somebody will make an allegation against them. So it's a difficult onion to crack because a large percentage, 20, 30, 40 percent of some certain parties, political candidates have some rap sheet or the other. Yes, Rishab, in fact, a lot of cases on politicians are politically motivated. But you have to make distinction between the kind of cases. If it is politically motivated, some kind of, you know, attack on each other, that could be political. But if it is ED, CBI, the, where the money is being recovered and there are serious charges of money laundering, those, are, those have to be dealt with very differently. And uh, the 
in a democracy it is the courts only that can disqualify not the election commission election commission's job is to conduct an election Correct. and uh, institute appropriate cases and once the disqualification because under the representation of people act or under it act or all uh, there are punishments for more than two years two years or more and if that happens the uh, you automatically get disqualified takes place Correct. There, yes so that is that is the way of checks and balances if uh, the election commission starts disqualifying they will not be considered impartial so let the courts do it cases will be instituted and they should be fast tracked a special uh, election court should be created they should be fast tracked okay. and uh, decision taken so that the even the member who's been okay. elected can get immediately disqualified okay so like, like i said now, now, now i i don't want to be naive and i don't want to say that the era of uh, any gundagiri in politics is over come on that that will be a leap of faith too far to say that no we'll all do uh, every candidate will be very honest about how much money they spend i won't even take that leap of faith but i'll give you another example a couple of years ago massive issue in karnataka that there is a group of girls who want to give their exams uh, and they want to uh, you know cover their faces while giving their exams because they happen to be muslim and the college authorities have a huge problem massive issue is going on it becomes the biggest polarizing debate of the country elections are held in karnataka a few months later and not one political campaign rally candidate person leader talks about that issue that issue just vanished into thin air which then makes you believe that it was created out of thin air now ambassador mukherjee this is a genuine problem because we are often our emotions are played with i can tell you a lot of political advisors pr advisors today tell politicians you know like once people like me were told jhagda karo drama karo you know trp badhti hai uh, in a in a generation past these politicians are told you know you you to say something obscene then people will be discussing you up you will become infamous and there is no such thing as bad publicity what do we do about that trend the first thing that that happens with this trend which is so correct is that it puts off decent women for from standing for elections if the atmosphere is so toxic as uh, sayed bhai just explained how could any decent woman ever think of standing for elections and where on earth would we be able to raise 75 lakhs on our own nobody would be able to so what happens is disher <coughs> is that the standard of people standing for elections unfortunately i hate to say this generally is rather low and appears to be heavily biased against encouraging women to stand like for instance the hijab issue i have always said that i personally believe that i would encourage my friends not to wear the hijab but if they wish to wear the hijab i would never stop them because it falls within the freedom of choice i think that is the most mature way of treating such issues i am an empowered woman i think hijab is not empowered but if they think hijab is empowered okay. let them wear it what okay. is it i'll give you another example okay a few years ago hmm? uh, there's a bollywood actor very famous bollywood actor dies a tragic death in bombay okay most likely it's by suicide we don't know what he was going through it becomes such an obscene issue in the country that literally the bombay police and the bihar police are at war at the supreme court against each other certain members of the police establishment then become politicians and i'm sorry to say ladies and gentlemen over a tragedy over a family who's lost a son and a brother and over for people who were fans have lost an icon all sorts of nonsense was done to just keep us entertained for months all those cases vanished they disappeared nothing came of it okay so we get played because our naivety is abused misused by politicians by just creating distractions all all sides do it okay so sumit this is a truism we get played okay so far and we are now literally elections have been announced and uh, we are uh, just a few weeks away less than a month away now as of at uh, this date it seems a bit more quieter so far all you've seen the bjp sort of be talking about uh, they're not even talking about ram mandir so much okay the pm has been all about in inaugurating projects uh, rahul gandhi yes indeed has been talking about caste a lot 
so you know there is there is a there is a, uh, a line running there but he's also in sort of taking a themology then we have the odd ones out are the dmk you know are talking in doing hate speeches but we're not seeing much hate speech even from the uddhav thakre is coming out are we seeing a more mature election this time around rishabh ji i have been maintaining now today if you have to win election if you have to win with prime minister modi you have to talk development you cannot win on caste divide you cannot win on sectarian divide you cannot win on jo chota mota trivial issues which will create overall the quantum of violence will come up but there are some states when you caught especially talk of bengal even you talk of kerala the violence will be much higher the violence in bengal still will be more than all the states of india put together because that is how the local politics of bengal is done that is how they run unfortunately the local politics you look at up how up is trouble free you look the quantum of violence has decreased substantially in bihar compared to 20 years back no so, so up used to have the worst of the of the That's of right. the both the caste polarization the yeah, worst yes. of the religious polarization but right. you've seen several elections there that have been incident free correct you know they are talking of development they are talking of better things and the people are voting for that but unfortunately in some states they will resort to violence they will go to violence they will use violence as the only way of settling scores because unfortunately there you don't oppose a oppo opponent you eliminate a opponent that is how they believe the politics is done so when it you comes again there will be some peculiar states where the quantum of the violence will will be high overall it will be a development based election okay. because everybody has now understood you cannot win a election by creating these tamashas creating these trivial issues creating some notanki here and there you cannot win a election by that and what you are absolutely right even bjp is not talking about the ram mandir they are not talking about as far as rahul gandhi is concerned you know for him he gets it's like a soup of the day he looks at the morning newspaper he picks up issue starts talking about that next day morning he picks up a new issue third day morning he picks up a third issue he has he has lost track of all the issues and he's running a campaign which is like no so so yeah so whether he does a good campaign bad campaign that's for him to figure out whether they win or lose is for him to figure out i'm just trying to trying to emphasize a point that just about two decades ago okay uh, you would have seen all sorts of toxic yatras taking place in ayodhya okay you would have seen triumphalism and boisterism which would have been created in a majority hindu community which was not required not the need of the hour does not serve any purpose because that's not the point okay that really hasn't happened so there is a maturity creeping in which i am i am sensing the pulse of it you had very good examples in el election in telangana in which the opposition uh, in in the center congress is one they were largely peaceful in karnataka where again the congress is one largely peaceful quiet elections everybody spoke of up largely peaceful of course bengal is the odd one out so now let me get uh, Say sayed asad abbas here also sayed sayed there are obviously still some politicians a raja and udya nadi come in into mind okay you can talk in terms to say that you know uh, hindu society sanatan dharm requires reform there is still discrimination we need to cover you can say that and that's perfectly reasonable to say or you can say they are like mosquitoes and dengue and we will crush them and kill them you can say that the south of india requires more representation focus in the media politics representation or you can say that india is not really a country you know the south really doesn't really consider itself a part of india so you can do the deliberate prov provocation why do some people still think that this deliberate provocation still works certainly rishab sab as a matter of fact uh, coming straight to the point that you raised of dmk so then it is stalin i really don't know what to tell him ignorance is bliss intellectual convenience or is it intellectual bankruptcy it was absolutely uncalled for i was on various debates on the same front there are like you said sir sanatan there could be reforms in every religion that's all right but calling for an eradication is absolutely not okay i believe those political leaders they need to understand their responsibility they come with ye public hai ye samjhati hai like my good friend sumit peer said they know everything mere writing and issues you can't really win an election because it's the whole mandate that comes through it's thousands and lakhs of minds who will be voting on that button or just as a matter of fact i disagree with the point my friend sumit made that modi ji or the bjp is not you know speaking about uh, ram mandir but they are just inaugurating no, no, project no, no. so fair no, enough they are, they are speaking about ram mandir for sure but you are, you understand the premise of what they could have done in ayodhya versus what they're not on, doing on every on every summit that modi ji had has attended i have watched every speech on every uh, channel news publication he has mentioned humne vaada kiya tha aur humne ram mandir karke dikhaya amit shah ji has also said even during the inaugural speeches they have said they have done this this is beat article 370 or ram mandir ram mandir is definitely there as a part of their uh, 
um, um, oratory. Also, as a matter of fact, one very important point as an experience of election candidate, I'd like to bring to your notice when anybody files their nomination for the candidacy of the Lok Sabha or Vidhan Sabha election during the scrutiny. The election returning officer of the constituency has every right to yes, disqualify the candidate due to disproposition of assets or any wrong found on the affidavit. Yeah, which but I that's generally on but technical you, grounds. And you can yes, say they can find technical on, grounds, yes. Yes, on just 30 seconds, Rishabh, sir. On technical grounds, they could be disqualified. As a matter of fact, they would need to go to the <clears> High Court <throat> or Supreme Court or bring in. By the time the date would have reached, you, you know, Sayed, so I, I, no, I agree with you. Now, uh, even, even if you look at the election affidavits, the you know, you all yeah. these big-time politicians claim they have ten thousand rupees in cash and one lakh FD and one lakh gold jewelry, and they don't even own a car or a house. Uh, it's it's unbelievable. So I know it's I know I'm 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 not asking for too much. I'm just asking a simple question. Does it seem? I don't want to jinx it, but here we are, just weeks away from a major election, the largest ever in the world. Does it seem a little bit quieter, a bit more relaxed, not as polarized as before? Zabardash Rishabh Sab, I know, I know, you know, covering elections for, I'm sure, three decades long. Uh, definitely, sir, for political uh, analysts like me and a uh, person like you who's been following closely, I'd summarize with two lines. Iptedai siyasat hai. Rota hai kya? Aage aage dekh, hota hai kya? Okay. Like the okay. So I might just jinx summer. it. I might. So let me get Sumit like back in. Summer, okay. like yeah, Rishabh. Sumit, I don't want to presage it because something nasty could happen tomorrow, right? It can happen day after. There might be a close contest. And generally, ladies and gentlemen, is ugliness. Some crime happens. Some, let's say, a road rage incident takes place. Okay. Then somebody will say, no, that person did it because he's Muslim. Then the uh, Hindus came and beat him up. And suddenly, it'll become a communal incident. But it was nothing. It was a car accident that took place. So we, we spin things into, into convenience of polarization. I was having a conversation just yesterday on this, Sumit. Uh, is it a bit boring then? Because uh, you can argue that uh, News X doesn't do tamasha. So, you know, the debates are very intellectual. So, you know, that can be a bit boring also. We want somebody to throw. I remember some, somebody came to me because on a different channel, some politician slapped the other politician. Somebody threw water at their face, viral videos. All great tamasha, great TV. Now, uh, yeah, I would laugh at that, right? I'm going. This is not serious news. I can't do this. Uh, so, is, but but therefore, does it become a bit boring? No, it doesn't become a bit boring at all because how a third, you know, fifth bigger largest economy becoming a third largest economy, how the world's most populous country, how the world's you know economic superpower and weapon superpower, the country with 800 million youth should behave or exactly behaving that way. High octane, low intellect TRP tamashas are not what the country needs. I want to just make three points. You know, BJP could have made a big tamasha around Ram Mandir. They are not making it. Point number one. Point number two, I saw one video of Rahul Gandhi ji where he is saying, you guys are 90% and you are not the only one who is here. You come and you send something to your person here. And there is one more you know, point I want to make to you, Rishabh ji. You know, Rahul Gandhi ji is talking to the audience. You know, it's, it's a big audience. He is telling them, कि भाई तुम लोग यहां हाथ पे हाथ धर के क्या कर रहे हो ऐसे इलेक्शन थोड़ी ना जीता जाएगा यू नो व्हेन दीस काइंड ऑफ इंस्टिगेशन हैपेंस लाइक कि आप आप लोग कितने हो आप लोग कितना जीएसटी देते हो जब आप लोग की संख्या पता लगेगी तब इससे निकलेगा आप लोग जीएसटी कितना देते हो आई मीन दीस काइंड ऑफ स्टेटमेंट्स दीस काइंड ऑफ डिविजंस वेयर यू आर इंजीनियरिंग ट्रबल कि आई वांट टू डू अ जाति जनगणना टू नो हाउ मच जीएसटी आर यादवस गिविंग हाउ मच आर क्रूज गिविंग एंड हाउ मच आर यू नो शियास गिविंग दैट इज एब्सर्ड एंड व्हाट आर यू टॉकिंग टू सो देयर इज अ लिटमस टेस्ट देयर देयर इज अ लिटमस टेस्ट देयर बिटवीन कमिंग टू द पीपल एंड सेइंग दैट वी हैव फाइव प्रॉमिसेस वी गोना गिव यू सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट जॉब्स अंडर एमएन रेगा वी गोना कम एंड डू अ स्टार्टअप फंड and whether that is now the new style of what we as voters are looking for versus saying that listen we're going to come and count all the all the tamils and punjabis and then bid them uh, to divide up the pie ambassador mukherjee quick quick last thought we are we are not at the end we still have two and a half months to go okay and uh, much water needs to flow under the bridge but it seems a little bit more mature sober regardless of political party you know we've seen such such disgusting things happen in kerala murders happen one after the other in all in the chief minister's constituency bengal every time it becomes so ugly uh, are you a bit more hopeful that it seems to be quieter this time and we maybe can push through this without destroying ourselves the violence in bengal politics 
was brought about when the British destroyed Bengal's syncretic culture. Bengal was not a violent state before. I come from East Bengal, actually. Uh, it's very unfortunate that today Bengal is always cited correctly as being the most violence-prone state in the whole of India. I hope that changes one day. But yes, I agree with you that although Syed Bhai warned us that it's only the beginning, but it would appear to me from where I live in South Delhi that it is uh, seems to be starting more on the note of what the voters want which is Vikas, development, development issues, empowerment of India, India's place in the world, pride that India is going forward. All of us as citizens, regardless of caste or religion, would like our country to advance. That includes the women from, of, of whose constituency is poorly represented in parliament and across assemblies. Women, Indian women who hold India together, okay. we want India to advance and it would appear I, 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 to... I, I think it's an ex well. excellent example. Well. And, and I'll give you a, a contrarian example uh, and to end this telecast. You know, there was a very noxious... Now, this lady has gone through persecution in her own right. So, I, un I understand persecution can affect your, your mental sanguinity. But a very noxious BJP MP by the name of Sadhvi Pragya, saying all sorts of nonsense things. She's still at it, right? But the day she didn't get a ticket, and remember when she was saying all these noxious things and every politician uh, under the brook was saying, why is Modi not speaking on this? Why is Modi not speaking on this? And she said, he did speak to me. And he said, I'll never forgive and forget what you've just said and done. And uh, she didn't get a ticket to recontest. So he spoke in the end. Now, if, if more examples like this can be set across across the board, we are heading in the right direction. It will never be perfect, ladies and gentlemen. The rough and tumble of democracy is what it is, okay? Uh, but it, it, I'm, I'm really enthusiastic that in my generation, I'm seeing an election that's not necessarily about Hindu-Muslim, about upper caste, lower caste, that it is about empowerment. It's about us all figuring out how we're going to make India a better place, how we're going to achieve social justice without doing the brick bats. Maybe, just maybe... Fingers crossed. I don't want to jinx it, but at least I'm having a hopeful conversation and able to have it because I'm not surrounded by absolute insanity. Uh, and that's a refreshing change. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.